Um, Luke chapter number five. Y'all ready? I'm ready. Luke chapter number five. It's good to see William who has uh, driven to come lead us in worship all the way down from Fort Myers. The business seminar is Tuesday. Prayer is Wednesday. Y'all got it? Business seminar Tuesday, 645. Prayer is Wednesday at 7. You work Wednesday? You should call in sick. No, anyway, just, <laughs> just joking. Luke chapter number 5. Luke chapter number 5. And I'm going to read out of the NIV version. Luke 5 is where we were at last week. Thank you to Pastor Jonas for filling in last weekend. It says, verse number 3, and Jesus got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in order in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled the boat so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' feet and said, Go away from me, for I am a sinful man. Father, I pray that our hearing would be so precise that it would lead us into increase. Help us not go by feelings. Help us go by what we hear. So speak so we can hear. Thank you for allowing us to test negative to be here this morning. To deliver what I believe is your word. It's in the mattress and mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. I, I want to begin by something really practical. I want to give you seven steps before I talk to you about what I believe in this text woven also as stewardship is seven things that you and I need to do to position ourselves to be financially stable. Now that Uncle or Moneybag Joe has sent us the stimulus, There are some things that we need to do with what Moneybag Joe has given us as our president. I, I want to first begin, it will be on the screens momentarily, um, and if not, you know, technology is always interesting, but it should be on the screens. But here are seven things that you and I need to be doing that will help us position ourselves for the future. And I want you to write them down, they're very practical, they're not deep, they're just they're just things that we all need to do to position ourselves into the right space. When you're there, if you got it up, I can't see y'all, so I'm going to have to go with mine. All right, so here's the seven things that you and I need to do to position ourselves in the right posture. Number one, save $1,000 as an emergency fund. Okay, thank you. Save $1,000 as a starter emergency fund. The STEMI that you got, you're already there. Unless you don't qualify for it. But if you don't qualify for it, you should already be there. So, so you need to save $1,000. Got it? So you need to pay off all debt that you can except for your house because that's probably an achievement that many of us are going to take a while to do. So maybe you put a thousand aside for your starter, you take, two fifth, you take 140 of it and pay your tithe because it belongs to the Lord even though the government gave it to you. You take a thousand dollars for your starter emergency fund and then the rest of it you pay off a debt that you owe. 
use increase to bring increase into your life. Do not use increase to add more liabilities to your life. Don't stand at the luxury store because you got a stimulus. You don't want to be stimulated. You want to sustain stimulation. So, so you need to make sure that you're not asking God for a miracle when God sent you 1400 And if you have children, he sent you more. So you already in the series, Run Me My Money, you're already in position. The next step for some of us is to save three to six months worth of expenses for emergencies. If you need to get a job at Uber, Lyft, to get you there, then do it for a season. You make short-term sacrifices for long-term dividends. Yeah. Say it again. You make short-term sacrifices for long-term dividends. The average minority does not have $1,000 in their savings. The average Instagram model doesn't have $1,000 in their savings. The average red bottom wearing, wig flying person does not have a thousand dollars. They have more in their clothes than they do in their account. So three to six months worth of savings. I want to give you guys just a little bit more advance for some of you that are sitting there saying, well, I got that already. Well, after you got three to six months worth of savings, you need to start learning how to make your money work for you. Because money is currency, it should flow, it should go back into the world and make you resources and bring it back. Invest 10 to 15 percent of your income to retirement. Tomorrow is coming. And if you are not prepared for tomorrow, tomorrow will rob you of the joy that's supposed to be there. Put it aside for tomorrow because tomorrow is coming. It's coming faster than you could ever imagine. The next one, save for college for children. If you have children, you need to position them to be better. I tell my children, I, my wife and I tell our children all the time, your college is being paid for through private school. You guys gotta get your scholarships and stuff like that. We did our part, time to do yours. Attempt to pay one extra mortgage payment a year you could take your stimulus and pay one extra mortgage payment a year. You're cutting down the life of your mortgage almost seven years when you do that every year. Why have a mortgage for 30 years when you can do it for 20? Even if you have it for 30 years, you don't have to pay it like 30. You can pay it like 20. And imagine being 20 years in and having no mortgage and being debt free and have no note and be able to do what you want to do because you got the money to do it. You can take your stimulus and do that way. Well, you might be saying, well, paying one extra mortgage, that's way too much. Divide your mortgage payment up by 12. Add that on to your monthly payment. Then by the end of the year, you've done it. You've added an extra payment. Make sure you let them know that it's additional principal or they'll just calculate it into your regular mortgage. But make sure you let the bank know this additional principal. They will tell you you don't need to do that because they don't want you to pay it off early. They want you to be a slave for the rest of your life. Number six, number seven, buy assets and give to impact others. Assets are things that go up. Liabilities are things that go down. Again, I'm not against designer things, I have them. I'm not against luxury things, I have them. I just think that the proper order of things matters. And you can't grow by just buying luxury items. Cars are liabilities. Your beautiful car that you paid $25,000 for when you drive it off the lot, it ain't worth that. Your rims are liabilities. I'm just trying to teach you what some of us have never learned. And if you're married, it doesn't mean that now's the time to fill everything. Y'all buying homes, praise the Lord. That doesn't mean you have to furnish your whole home because you bought one. You can take your time doing that. 
Don't go into debt and get a guest room for no guests that you're not even going to have. I got, I got to get this guest room together. I got to get my dining room set. You ain't having people over. You can't even cook. Some of us. I can't cook. I ain't judging nobody. I can't cook. I'm, I'm in the same boat. I don't need a dining room table for what? We're not cooking? If you have it, get it. What I'm simply trying to get you to see is the order of priority. But I, I want to teach you from this passage of Scripture out of, outside of the practical thing, the scriptural things. I do believe that who we pay first is who we worship. But I do want to give you the key to growing and increase. And it is not chasing a bag. I believe the key to increase is your ear. And a lot of us can't grow well because we don't hear well. So the kind of fishing that they would do is they had a big old net that they'd just throw out there. It wasn't line fishing, it was a net. And they would throw this net out there hoping that fish would come into it. I want to tell you that Peter in this story has an interesting situation happening that the master looks at him and says, hey, let me, let me speak to these people about ministry and let me help them grow. And, and in the process of me helping them grow, I'm going to help you grow. I want you to say this with me and type it on the screen. Favor is on my ear. I want you to say it with me. Say, favor is on my ear. I want you to say it like you got life. Type it like you're happy. Say, favor is on my ear. You will not find favor listening to fear. I don't care how the market is going, what did God say? They tell me that if you go out and buy a house right now, owners are not even listening to you. That is fine. That is a fact. But what did God say? Amen. They said that God told me, listen, if you, if you just sit there and be patient, I, 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 what goes up got to come down. Maybe God's telling you, and people say, well, you, should, you need to buy right now. What if God's telling you to wait? I don't care what the economy is telling you. I'm asking you what did God say because God knows how to set you up better. You, you, some of you got property and you don't know what to do with it. I want to ask you what did God say? Because God may give you a strategy that doesn't make sense to everybody else, but it will set you up for what he's trying to do. The favor is not in the statistics. The favor is on your ear. You will never find favor listening to people. You will find favor by listening to what God says. That's why I'm asking you to come to prayer on Wednesday night because there's some favor that needs to be released, but you can't hear it. So favor is on your ear. Let me tell you this. When Jesus talked to Peter, he understood something very practical. Opportunity is not obligated to come again. When I tell you to let down your nets, you do it now because opportunity is not obligated to come again. Keith, opportunity is not obligated to come again. Fear will stop favor from moving in your life. Favor is on your ear. I, I want to suggest to you, those of you that have started the journey of tithing, Every tithe represents the simple fact that the treasure has not replaced the king of your heart. When I tithe, it is a symbol that the treasure has not replaced the king on my heart. When I get my financial statement and see how much my wife and I gave to the church, it could pay for our kids' tuition twice. But I trust that if I give to God, God will give me opportunity that will far surpass what I've ever given him. And I want to challenge some of you to start trusting God because the promise of God 
will move you from your place of comfort. Peter, you out here on the shore, I need you to move a little deeper because where you've been fishing is too shallow. You got to get a little deeper. And some of you, if you haven't taken time this year and set some time aside just to hear God, you are totally on the shore. There's a lot of things happening in this world, but you're hearing. If you're not hearing, you're not seeing. So here it is. The promise of God will always move you from the place of comfort. God will never give you anything that will make you comfortable. If you don't like to be stretched, then you will not use your faith. You know, sometimes God will give you something and then ask you to give it back to him to see if that has taken your heart over what he gave you. I was talking to a man and, I, and we were having a dialogue and, I, and he has a monster of a house and I said, well, why did you buy that? He said, because I could. I said, I understand. But how much could you be doing if you sold it? He said, Pastor, I worked hard for it. I said, you did. And it's also causing you to miss church. It's also causing you to go into debt because you're behind. How much more money could you make if you sold it? Let me ask you a question. Do you love the house more than the giver of it? He said, Pastor, if I sold it, I'd make two, three hundred thousand dollars. I said, are you willing to sell it to start better? Because just because you bought it and God has sustained you in it doesn't necessarily mean it was God's will for your life. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. And some of us are asking God to sustain what he never ordained. God bless me in this car, and then the car break down, and you can't afford the brakes, and you can't afford the oil change, but it looked good. So here it is. The Jordan River where God was baptized in, where Jesus was baptized in, is a powerful recipient of growth because it flows, it gives, and it receives. The Dead Sea is called the Dead Sea because it gives, it receives, and never gives. It has no point of putting things out. It only receives. And anything that just receives will eventually be dead. That goes relationally. That goes friendship-wise. That goes partnership-wise. If it's only one way, it's going to die. Jesus speaks to Peter because Peter is a disciple. Discipleship must begin with discipline. You cannot just be a disciple without discipline. And you cannot grow economically without being a discipline spender. You have to be a discipline giver too. I want to ask you, what are you buying? that's taking you out of discipline. Maybe you could secure your future if you just stopped your habit. Let me give you this quote, I thought it was pretty good. Um, some of us don't have a money problem, we have a behavior problem. <laughs> you know, you don't have a money problem. I know a lot of us Want to, uh, let me tell you this. Going broke is a behavior problem, not a money problem. Because a lot of us have to be disciplined to wait even though we have it. Do I need to put wood floors down now or can I ride the carpet another year? Let me tell you something. God is big enough to bless you without you having to do PPP fraud. Y'all yeah. hear me? God is big enough to bless you without you having to do fraud for him to bless you. Now, if it's legitimate, do it. 
But if you got to come create all these things to get income and increase and you think God's going to bless it, it's going to catch up to you later. Let me give you this, because y'all really looking mad. Jesus tells Peter in the Greek word, he says, let down. The word let down is a command to everyone on the boat. Interestingly enough, Peter is the only, Peter's a cusser, but he's got good hearing. Because when Jesus asked them to walk on water, he invited all of them. Only Peter came. This same scenario, Jesus says, let down your nets. It was a command to everybody. The only one that did it was Peter. If you don't hear well, you miss out on opportunity. Here's the most interesting thing that happened. It was the wrong time of day. It was the wrong place. The death to catch fish was not there. But Peter obeyed because he heard. I want to tell you something. Sometimes what you hear doesn't make sense to everybody. But you got to go with what you heard. I want to ask you a question. What have you heard? And if you haven't heard, maybe that's why you keep going by your, I'm a Sagittarius. I'm a Pisces. I'm a Taurus. I'm an Aries. No, God doesn't need to give you a horoscope to give you direction. What have you heard? People who live off their horoscope can't hear. This is, no. God is giving commands each and every day. And he gave a command, let down your neck. He gave everybody the same command. The only person that took it was Peter. Because following God is easy. Obeying Him is another level. It's easy to walk. God told me to go to church on Sunday. God told me to pray. I'm doing all these things. But what happens when God specifically asks you to do something that doesn't seem popular to do, but God asks you to do it? Here's the thing. Peter did not catch anything all night because Jesus wasn't in his boat. Maybe you would catch more if you changed the people in your boat. Put God in your boat and let me see you work. You've been working as hard as you can. Put God in your boat and let me see what God does. The person that I was talking to about the house at the time was unemployed. And I told him, man, you're such a great salesman. Why don't you go and start selling? He said, what? I said, go and start being a salesman and watch what God does. He says, okay, pastor, I'm going to take your word. He comes to me last week and says, pastor, I just want to tell you, I made $7,000 last week. And I said, this is what happens when you take instruction and you listen to instruction, God will bless your work. He sells and what he does is he says, before I begin my day, I start to pray. Maybe you would find favor if you just started your day saying, God, send me people that I need to meet that are going to help me get to my next level of destiny. Peter didn't catch anything all night. Your music career. Have you invited God in? The business career. Have you invited God in? Did you ask God where you should go to plant this business? Did you pray over the contract? Did you have an attorney read it first, but did you pray over it secondly? Maybe you are where God was and not where God is. You can't grow looking backwards. Obedience brings increase, not your net. Peter's net didn't bring him increase. Now you could say your net income won't bring you increase either. See, your job determines your paycheck. God determines your income. 
You might be saying, well, Pastor, I ain't make no money. You don't need to make more money for God to add more to your life. God can bring prices down so that your money can stretch. But favor is on your ear. Let me give you some practical things that I see in this text that you and I must have in order to increase. Peter and his fishing team spent strenuous hours working. They had to have a work ethic which required persistence and dedication. Y'all generation, which I love, I'm a part of, you have not learned how to endure. God gives you a dream and you quit on it the first year. It, it sounds funny, but it's true. No business grows in a year. And when it does grow, you don't take the seed and eat it. You put it back in the ground. I always say, don't eat your seed in the morning because you'll be hungry at night. No marriage grows the first year. Pastor, I'm done with it. It's only been one year. It's like telling a little baby, I'm tired of you because you won't grow. The baby's only one. It takes time to mature. It takes time to be a power cow. What's your credit score? Don't scream it out loud. How much money do you have in the bank? If you don't know, how can God increase you? You got, no one's going to know for you. How much debt do you have? If you don't know, how is God going to increase you? What's the plan? No, we always want God to bless our obedience, but God needs to give me a plan that I need to work. And if I work my plan, the plan will work for me. I know you want me to just tell you run around the church seven times and put your seat on the altar and it's going to turn things around. That's not how it works. You got to go home today and put a plan together and say, listen, I'm going to move in with my mama and my daddy, even though I don't like listening to them talk, and I'm going to save for 10 months and come out of this thing debt-free and come out winning. Let me, let me tell you this. Growth is a dark thing. When flowers grow, they grow in darkness. We're celebrating too many light seasons and not dark seasons. There are seasons where you're going to be hidden. No one's going to know about you. No one's even going to know your name. No one's gonna, but you're putting in the work because you got the work ethic. The perseverance to be a fisherman is not something easy. And Jesus was paralleling that to being fishers of men. Because to help people change is not an overnight occurrence. And some of us give up on people because they're just not making it according to our timetable. You have to have work ethic. Number, number one, number two, number three, number four, whatever point it is. You need partners that have the same thing you have. All of Jesus' part, all of Peter's partners had boats. When increase comes, it's not time for you to go get a boat. You should have already had one. My partners must already be in position. Notice this, whatever God sends you will never be big enough, will never be small enough for only you to catch. Because once you start increasing, then God starts calling you to build teams. Because increase should cause you to expand and put others around you to catch the overflow which is coming off your life. Number two, partners had information. They knew what to do when opportunity came. 
You need to start learning so that when opportunity comes, you already have the knowledge to get running. Hear me. Some of you need to sacrifice. Spend a season being mentored without pay so that when you do come in your season, you got enough knowledge to be paid. You don't want to do it. Your generation, my generation, how much, how much am I going to pay for this? Sometimes a conversation is worth more than the payment. It's like Tuesday night. It's free. But majority of people won't come and they'll complain that they're broke. Information is power when you use it well. Most of us are following people who don't have any money. They're teaching us how to be millionaires and they've never seen one. Your partners need to have information. Number three, your partners need to know how to fish. What I mean by that is your partners need to know what you're trying to do. They need to know the industry that you're trying to be in. I want to write a book. Who are you talking to? My auntie. How many books she's written? I'm going to go to social media. How many books they've written? I want to buy a Mercedes. Why are you going to talk to someone who has a Kia? There's nothing wrong with a Kia. My point is, is that they don't understand how it is to have a Mercedes if they've never driven one. You need to start finding partners that have what you have or have what you need to have. Pastor, the people that I know, they're not going to help me. You never asked. And if you ask and they rejected you, you've got to be okay with rejection because sometimes rejection is God's protection. Because mentors could be a mentor or a tormentor. They're both the same word. So you got to be patient enough to find people that will give you information and instruction because God's way of blessing your life is through instruction. You need to have partners who know what they're doing. And here's, here's the thing, partners who know how to bring in the fish. Last point is this. You need partners that will prevent jealousy. My preparation is our fruitfulness. They receive the harvest off of Peter's labor, not off their own. If you're a team member, for the love of God, play your part. If you're a team member, you don't have to be, you know what? Some of us need to learn how to be number one at being number two. You don't have to be a number one to be a number one. You may be a number three, but be the best number one at being number three. What kills us as people is everybody wants to be one. You need to do inventory on your team. Are you okay with being number two on this team? And if you're not, then I, I see a lot of you doing partnerships. It's a beautiful thing. But be careful when you got four number ones working together. Because if one of us won't decrease, we will never see increase. Two alphas working together may not work. One of us got to be able to say, you know what? I'm going to take the, I'm going to bow out so that you can win because your winning is my security too. But you cannot win with insecure people. Jesus never built his team with people that wanted to be number one. And when they did want to be number one, he checked them. Because number one seems easy because you're not doing it. 
I want to challenge you to find partners and stop being part of the cut-off relationship culture. I don't need relationships. Well, you don't need God because God uses relationships. The kingdom of God is advanced through friends. I need you to have a plan. What's your plan? You came to church, that's a great thing. I came, studied, prepared for you, I hope it blessed you, but hearing the word is not gonna do anything until you start getting the plan. I ask every one of you to get the app every dollar. Did you get it? Did you use it? See, you didn't use it. And some of you are wondering, how's God gonna give me an increase? He can't, because you don't follow instruction. You can't grow by shouting. You grow by practice. Don't use the Word of God to absorb it. Use it to transform you. Pastor, I ain't got no money. Start being an Uber driver. Do a lift for a season. Tell these tax people, I'll bring you a client for $100 per head. I know people, I'll give, give me $100 for everyone I get you. That's 1000 bucks if you got 10 friends. You got to be creative. You who are entrepreneurs and trying to grow your brand, stop giving your brand to everybody. No one respects you if you're so easily accessible. Don't lower your quality because I, somebody tells, hey, PD, I want you to come speak for me. I'm going to text you and, and the event's tomorrow. I ain't coming. One, we don't know each other like that. Two, I'm not cheapening myself because you didn't prepare for me. You've got to know how to, if God has given you something, you've got to steward what God has given you well. You know, your, your appearance at a thing endorses a thing. It gives value to a thing. Stop letting people pimp your influence. Strategize today. I want you to win. I can't make you win. I can only give you God's word to help you win. I can tell you the road that God is trying to carve for many of us is not what everybody else is doing. You got to hear God for yourself. Favor is on your ear, not in fear. Whatever God calls you to do, it will always be scary. But make sure you heard him, because if you heard him, he will open the doors that no man can shut. Guys, you, guys and girls, women and men, you've got to pray. Because if you don't, you'll win at life and lose at what matters. Just because you're my partner doesn't mean you're my friend. And partners don't have to be friends. And friends don't have to be partners. You can't always grow with your family. There's so many who said they're going to change the dynamic. And they don't change it. You got to learn how to lead alone. I know it's scary, it's lonely, it's, it's frustrating that no one supports you and blah, blah, blah. But listen, everyone that God needs to support you will. And the people that you need favor with, God will send them. Stop complaining about who's not for you. You got one that's for you that's bigger than everyone that's against you. So I'm out of time. Father, I thank you for the word of God.
I have spoke what I believe you gave me to help your children. 